Triggers. 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 Welcome, Gearheads. Happy Sunday morning and welcome to the Blind Mike Project. This week, Mike breaks down a stuttering John let loose in the wilds of Atlantic City. Also, Mike breaks down just what the hell is going on at Barstool, New York. He also updates us on the Mark Marin versus Burt Kreischer feud, plus Joe Rogan. And back this week, off the chain gang, just long enough to record some podcasts. Riggers! And now your host... A man who was born to be this generation's Jane Goodall, studying the misshapen and diseased apes of the Dabbleverse and beyond. A Twitter legend, Blind Mike Geary! Hey, hey. You know what's funny about that intro is, uh, I put, so Hack Ride just went off the title that I made and I changed it last minute. Not, not <laughs> his fault at all. Yeah. But what was funny about it is, I had uh, Barstool New York in the title originally, which I don't know if we even get to that today. Someone just transpired. It feels like old news. Mm. But um, Hagrid doesn't know what that means or anything. He just saw that it was in the title. So that intro reminded me of like, you know, when you watch like my TV or something and they have a commercial for Seinfeld as if it's a new episode. (laughs) Kramer's in a bit of a jam this week. (laughs) It's just vague dialogue (laughs) to make you watch it. When Hagrid's like, what the heck is going on at Barstool, New York? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that is, uh, we might we might get to that. We might get to a lot. What, what I'm most excited to get to, by far, is an interview that I found. I don't know how much of it you watched, but that's... All of it. That, wait, this is all just filler until we get to that. <laughs> oh, my God. The worst one yet. But there's uh, there's a lot to get to going on at Atlantic City. It is just a heap of garbage that is milling about uh, Atlantic City in New Jersey. We might have an on-site reporter. We might have an expert correspondent popping on today. We don't know, um, but we will uh, we'll see as the day progresses. So there's a lot I want to get to. First, a couple of in-house items I wanted to mention first. Craig, I told you not to look at this, but there are... Uh, I don't know if you've noticed when you're gone. Welcome back, by the way. Hey, hey, hey! Thanks for when having you're, me. When you're when you are gone, there's a, a groundswell of support for you. Have you seen this? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, it's it's overwhelming. People, yeah. there there are a lot of people. Now there are a lot of hack riders. There are a lot of supporters out there. But our comments section is not even really about the show anymore. It's when hack ride produces. It's overwhelming either for or against hack ride and it's mostly about the voice people seem to hate the voice it's so toned down from where it started too i don't i don't even really know uh, it's an unusual voice <laughs> but i don't even really notice it like i'm surprised no. how many people get so mad at it and if you heard his real voice you'd prefer the modulated one that's not his real voice <laughs> i mean it's a fun his... joke i do in the comments yeah, sometimes. Yeah, that's right I've seen that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, so what I wanted to do for you people that uh, you know are maybe anti hack ride and want Craig around more. Craig is completely checked out of the show. He's lost interest. Would you say that's fair? That's not true at all. People to say that's the second most comments we get are Craig's on his phone. He's not paying attention. He looks lackadaisical, like he doesn't care, like he's thinking about toddlers. <laughs> that's definitely not true at all. Um, so. What I what I am proposing 
is I think if you could pull up the image I sent you, Craig, I think the Craig, we have a new name for Craig supporters. Okay. okay. What's the matter? <laughs> Let me make this full screen for everybody. <laughs> yeah, for all you Craigophiles out there. Uh... <laughs> I think I think if we put out a t-shirt. No, I no. <laughs> with... <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> I I think we put out a t-shirt and I've got a number in my head that I won't uh -huh. reveal until we hit it. Yeah. If we hit a certain number of shirts sold, I think Hack Ride doesn't produce another episode. Does that seem fair? <laughs> This, this is what's gonna someone's gonna have this on their chest <laughs> so guys let me know in the comments <laughs> section would you are you a craigophile do you identify as a craigophile a convicted craigophile as it were and uh would you buy this t-shirt craigophobe in the chat someone says it should say <laughs> Yeah, well, those are the hack riders. The hack riders are craigophobes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, yeah, guys, let me know, and maybe we'll put that up. Uh, blindmike.net is where you go. That's uh, Our merch tab is there. If you didn't know we had merch, we do, in fact. Maybe we, even one of those fine shirts in the near future. Well, fine is relative. <laughs> oh, I hope your neighbor wears one. <laughs> <laughs> they should hang them up on the telephone poles around your street. I remember you. <laughs> um. So, yeah, blindmike.net, that's where all our links are if you want to support the show for free. If you want to watch this show every Sunday at 10 a.m., whether we're live or not, but we are today, um, you can do that. All the links are at blindmike.net. Become a patron. Become a member, um, uh, whether it be YouTube or Patreon, whichever is easier for you. If you're watching live right now, you become a member. We have gifted memberships available, I think. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, <laughs> do all that stuff at blindmike.net. What's the, the, uh, the chat is like, you know, I am a Craigophile, but I am not wearing that. <laughs> I think I think it's a nice piece. <laughs> <laughs> One of those ones you just kind of hang up in the on the wall. It's decor. Yeah, sure, that's much better. That's where people want it on their wall. <laughs> uh, Certainly not in a dresser somewhere. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I don't know. There's there's a lot going on. So there's some in-house stuff I wanted to get to, but maybe we'll get to it later. But real quick, I do want to promote our boy David Collins before we get to all this stuttering John stuff. He did a live show the other night. Did you see that? I didn't watch it yet. David Collins 30 minute half hour live show was in Iowa the other night. And I just wanted to give you guys a little taste. If you couldn't make this one, this is how David starts his live show. Just and and he you know kind of took the temperature of the room a lot of people don't know who he is and uh this was a, an announcement from early in this program quick warning we did tease as promoting this in some other shows we teased a little bit that there was going to be a fake gun at some point involved with the show i wanted to let everybody know there is not going to be a fake gun involved in the show at any point in time so if you do see a gun please let somebody know that is a real gun <laughs> Just starts his show by saying, if anyone has a gun, be afraid. <laughs> it's not a bit. <laughs> There's just no reason for it. <laughs> He's a peach. Uh, we miss David Collins. But uh, hey, Craig of Files Unite. At least he got Craig back, right? <laughs> well. Let me know in the chat if you are a convicted craig of file <laughs> There's some. I see it. No oh, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. That's, that must feel nice for you. Yeah, sure. This is this is great. <laughs> That's what I need is a mock mug shot that has the word we'll, file on it. We'll we'll tweet out the image in case people want it later. <laughs> Do you want me to tweet it out now? Yeah, why not? Um, but most importantly, there is something going on in Atlantic City that should embarrass virtually everyone involved. This is this is just oh. a debacle. God, I couldn't quite follow it, but all I did know was that I I'm glad I'm not involved. What a heaping pile of white trash this yeah. is. Oh, yeah. my God, it's disgusting. Yeah. And it started early in the week with John and the, the stuff with his flight and Spe missing his Spirit Airlines flight and bitching about Vince not buying him a ticket. And he wrote Vince off. Let's not forget. Actually, 
maybe we should start there. Can we see some of the tweets? Yes. Um, that he had er- earlier in the week. Yep. I just That's tweeted cool. out the uh, the image, by the way. <laughs> oh, good. Go follow Craig on Twitter. I tweeted it out from the show. <laughs> Craig of Files out there. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, yeah, he's got a hey, fatty patty. Email me. I'll give you my room number. Then we can quote talk. Ooh, <laughs> that'll get you out of, out of any legal wranglings. You put it in quotes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a talk. <laughs> like, uh, hey, man, Vince the lawyer is a legitimate ass. <laughs> okay. Get to him. This is fun. Remember, keep that one up for, keep, for later. <laughs> remember these. Uh, Vince the lawyer is a legitimate asshole that I could single handedly get him disbarred for, for uh, playing my message without consent. California is a two party state. Stay tuned. It's not how voicemails work, by the way. Nope. <laughs> John's like, I left him a voicemail and without my consent, he played it. They're like, so, hey, the voice, basically every voicemail at this point is, hey, you're about to be recorded. Yeah. So buckle up. Here's the beep. Uh, a guy from Maryland said he traveled all the way to see me, got here, and called me a has been. Then why come? Someone on Reddit I saw pointed out, like, where is this mystery man? He didn't, he went there to fuck with John and then left. He hasn't posted anything. He just, dis- he vanished into the night, apparently. <laughs> it's a big WATP fan. Yeah. So um, John's having all sorts of problems, uh, early in this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm even confused on where we start. So, what do you have up first? And we'll just let uh, it should we put the should we want to play the confrontation? Then we can hear the before and after. I guess. Sure. Yeah. So this is, I'm sure you guys have seen it by now, but this is uh, what Patrick Melton and John. Yeah, and the the a casino. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's play a little bit of this. We can talk over it because it's just nonsense. But. <laughs> He is tiny. That's the main takeaway. People are saying people are saying he's about five three. That's what it looks like. Unless Melton's like seven feet tall. Melton's a big dude. But I believe John later referred to this as David versus Goliath or something. That's what it looks like. <laughs> but he probably thinks he's Goliath because of his career. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> My favorite image from this whole thing is when he's just pointing <laughs> everyone out to security and he's like, I didn't talk oh, to him. Are we, are we there yet? Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's the best part, of course. That's the people, about, that's he the walks away and comes it. back and starts pointing it out. What you couldn't hear, I will say, is Patrick Melton saying, like, I am sorry. I'm sorry. Now, we'll get to what Patrick meant by that, but he does say, like, I'm sorry for whatever, and John doesn't accept the apology. I think he meant. Yeah, we'll get to it. What do you mean that guy with the uh, piece of security? I was just talking to a random guy. They're getting in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Is this where he's talking to the female security guard? Um, yes. Okay, so Melton and Tukey, I heard later say that this woman was like fired or put on leave or something like removed from her position because of this i guess so i don't know if they were joking or not but that's that is what they said that's she didn't really do him too much she kind of just stood there well that's the issue apparently she she let this happen <laughs> so that's crazy so john john goes up to secure i guess to be fair patrick melton does say like john didn't seek out security they approached him that's true but, but, but john John starts going. This guy made fun of my kids. That guy, he, you do you know the shit way. Of- <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we'll get to uh, my favorite potential happening in this Patrick Melton string of clips here. Okay, yeah. So let's get into Patrick Melton now. So this is from before the altercation, right? Before what we just watched. So yeah. moments before that, this was Patrick Melton's attitude. Um, if John thinks I'm going to apologize to his face, he's got another thing coming. That was a bit. That was for fun. If he hasn't accepted that his daughter has an arm penis, uh, you know, this is not a serious thing that needs to be addressed. So if you want to get in a big scuffle about it, we can. Or we can have a beer and you forget about it. You know, I know I would want a beer if my daughter had an arm penis. So he's, he's very hung. I don't, I don't know the 
core issue with Patrick versus John. If anyone in the chat knows more, I just know Patrick was shitting on John's kids. I don't know if this if Patrick like us just finds the devil verse entertaining and just started commenting on it or if he has some other issue with John. I don't I don't know where that comes from, but he seems very focused on the trans aspect of it, probably because he knows that's what will provoke John the most. Um so he starts like in that uh, interaction that you just saw there, Patrick's like basically saying like, "Hey, I'm sorry you took it that way." Which people are split on this so far. They're saying like, some are saying, "Oh, Patrick's a pussy." He, he backed down to John. Other people are saying John uh, was being toyed with by Patrick, and John kind of backed down by tattling to security on him. I don't really know where I stand because my take on it is th- these men shouldn't be fighting. The should men be in there. 40s and fit late john's in his late 50s i think patrick's in his 40s or something like that and not just these two either (laughs) no no none of these people should be coming to fisticuffs over things said on a podcast like this is the worst possible devolving of radio wars ever like if you look back at the stern radio wars back in the day if you knew they would dwindle down to this that old men would be getting held back on the floor of the Borgata in 2024, then we might just say, you know, I think Howard's doing the wrong thing. I don't think yeah. you should. He shouldn't be influencing any of this. It would be like when uh, uh, Opie always tells that story about seeing Artie in the bathroom. If you just start yeah. punching him in the back of the head. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, but even yeah. in that moment, at least Artie was, like, Artie, the heroin addict, was adult enough to be like, what are we going to fist fight? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think that's kind of where patrick was coming from i don't know a ton about patrick melton um i i he kind of in the in clips i've seen he kind of goes off like a tough guy but in watching this he didn't seem like he was seeking out a fight you know you know he was standing he was standing there pretty calm just smoking a cigarette people throwing fight like uh, fists aren't holding cigarettes (laughs) yeah so let's hear uh his analysis of it Yes, now we're uh, post-incident. Okay, so this is later in his hotel room. He's breaking the whole thing down. Everyone's seen the video already. Finally, we're like, all right, we're going to do this? Let's do it. So I just walk up. Now, there's a part of, like, the bar that's kind of, like, the bar's raised, and then there's, like, a part lower down. So I walk up to the rail on the lower part, and John's there. And John's walking around the bar trying to get noticed. This is literally what he's trying to do. <laughs> he, he watched him for several minutes before he went over. Excuse me. Are him. you familiar with Ringo Starr, perchance? <laughs> uh, we have we have a uh, Cardiff backstage, by the way. Oh, okay. bring him, bring the man in, Cardiff. Welcome aboard, my friend. What's up, my Nogas? Hello. Hey. So where where do you stand on what's happening this weekend? I'm sure uh, you know, you've gotten into it a lot and are going to get into it as the week goes on. But does it seem like a complete shit show to you? Uh, yes, yes, obviously. <laughs> I mean, what else? What else could it have been? I mean, it wasn't it wasn't an event of any type. It was just like four. Like imagine you're at school and there's four different you know tables in the cafeteria. And all four are deciding to go to the same mall at the same time, right? <laughs> yeah. Like they all hate each other, but they're going to cross <laughs> paths at some point. And then there's the one guy at the end of the table in the cafeteria who kind of likes the other table guy, the one guy at the other table. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah. you know, they kind of cross streams. And then the guy at the first table, the lead guy at the first table, what the fuck are you doing talking to that table? It's, it's destined for um, disaster. Uh, cool. destined for, but again, it's, it's Brennan. Brennan's whole brainchild. I'm just, I'm just gonna go to AC, and people are gonna show up. Like, you gotta put some type of structure to something, no? Like, there has to be. Why isn't there a comedy show, Kevin Brennan, professional comedian? Or like, right, or- yeah, that that's what I. And we didn't do a good job setting it up because I don't really know the answer. What was the original? So it was just Kevin saying, "Hey, fans of mine, come to Atlantic City," or was it supposed to be like him, Chad, and? Oh, it was pay pigs. Uh, pay pigs. So it was just him. It was because I saw I saw Carl talking about this, where Kevin was very jealous that Brock Lee was now friends with John. There was a whole yeah. lovers quarrel yes. over Brock Lee. So is that what this event was supposed to be? Kevin and the three people that pay him a hundred dollars a day? Yeah, I think he was tired of YouTube taking thirty percent. So it's like just just mm-hmm. hand me cash. 
please. <laughs> I'll go to AC and pick up the cash, and I'll quickly put it right back on Blackjack. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah. He did it before, like he did this a few months ago, where he just said, "Let's, you know, let's go to let's go to AC and and show up." But because I know he knows he can't sell tickets to an event, right? So if he doesn't sell tickets, if it's not a show, nobody can make fun of him. Right. Well, we it's so we've we've done that. Like we went to Brendan Schaub's show, and like I bought tickets for some of my uh, some of my patrons and stuff like that. We meet up, we hang out for a little bit, we go to the show, we leave. But there's like a, there's a nucleus there. We're there for a reason, an event. It seems yeah. it seems like Kevin was like, "Hey, we'll meet me near the blackjack table." Yeah. I guess I'll be around somewhere. Yeah. It would have been so much better if there was a podcast where instead of actually fighting, they could have fought on a microphone for entertainment purposes. Yeah, guys, use your words. You are not physically imposing men, Kevin or John or any of these people. Patrick, you, you, I... sh you shouldn't be relying on your fists. You're, you make your money supposedly with your words. Use them. Well, we've 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 listened to all those shows, so maybe the fists is the way to go. <laughs> yeah. All right, you're right. Just start bashing each other's brains in, I guess. You, you guys got nothing else. <laughs> All right, let's hear a little more from Patrick Melton. Phone up, elbow up. You know, guys who talk like this on the phone. Oh, I am. Up. <laughs> and he's like, he's literally just doing laps around the bar, trying to get recognized. All checks out so far. Yep. So I walk up and I see him, and I just go, John, John, what's up, baby? And he walks away. And he comes back and he goes, are you going to Paul? He comes right up to me. We're, we're reaching distance. It's just me and him. Uh, everybody I'm else. surprised John recognized Patrick Melton because all we've ever heard is are John you? doesn't know who that is. <laughs> right? Am I crazy? <laughs> you sure he's got a picture of him in his wallet at this point? <laughs> like anytime people are like, hey, John, Patrick Melton makes fun of your kids. John's like, I don't know who that is. Yet immediately he sees the guy in a casino in that context and is like, are you going to apologize for making fun of my kids? <laughs> and he's like, are you going to apologize for what you said to my kids? And I keep saying to him, like, you know, I'm sorry you got hurt. Like, they're jokes. It's a podcast. You say a lot of shit on your podcast you don't mean. You say a lot of shit on your podcast you don't know. <laughs> you know, he's talking shit. Dax. And he goes, are you going to apologize for what you said to my kids? He's not even hearing the words that I'm saying. And I said, I'm sorry you got upset, but John, and he just walks away. He just walks away. So where do you, where, where does Cardiff stand on this? Where uh, we were talking about it right before you hopped on that some people are, I, I've seen on Reddit that some people are saying like, Hey, John won. John didn't back down. And then other people are saying that, uh patrick pushed out and people are saying the reverse of both of those things so have Where you, you watched stand? have you watched the interaction yes my only thing is i hear patrick saying i'm sorry and he kind of spun it as like i'm saying i'm sorry in like a menacing way like fucking with him but he is I, saying i'm sorry i know i i'm not a big fan of blanket statements yeah but everybody in that video is a fucking loser <laughs> <laughs> everybody mm -hmm. okay that i agree with <laughs> The security guards, Melton, <laughs> stuttering John, the white dress that John keeps talking about coming down the, the escalator. Everybody's a fucking loser. I was thinking about it. I was like, this morning, I was like, I'm glad the people that I like, like I'm glad Carl and Cardiff weren't there. And then I remembered Tukey was there and I wanted to like sprint to Atlantic City and rip him out of there. <laughs> I, never, I never said I wasn't there, Mike. Oh, are you? you maybe, maybe, maybe today. We'll see. You could be Brock Lee. I could be broccoli. There's a lot of people that do think I'm broccoli, but I just don't have broccoli's <laughs> cash flow. No, no, no. Broccoli would never fuck with me. <laughs> uh, next, we got him talking about John coming back after he walked away. Okay. He's over there at the bar drinking, drinking, seething. You see him just watching us laughing, Drooling. having fun. There's five or six of us at this point laughing, having fun, joking around. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We're all just standing there having fun. John's watching us. We keep, everyone keeps going. It's uncomfortable. Everyone keeps going. He's just staring at us. And you just see him over there drinking. Just getting angry. Just getting angry. He stands up. And he comes over. He walks down the steps over to our group. There is one female security guard. 
Uh, at the end is it of- weird that you, when John gets off the bar stool, he's like an inch, he's like eight inches shorter? <laughs> The greatest part like, of I'm that coming for you, and they just drops down. <laughs> the greatest part of these sightings is getting to see John from the waist down. That's yeah, how, the, the, is he about what you uh, thought? I saw a lot of comments on his looks too, but that's pretty much what I thought he would look like, right? Yeah, yeah no, but just the legs are just so, so like they they're not. Maybe it's the jacket he was wearing, but it just made the legs look inappropriately short. Well, the pants. Body. The pants were easily 10 inches too long, so he just had that big bundle right at the top of his shoes. <laughs> his voice, it would be like a great movie or sitcom reveal. Like, his voice, when he yells, when he's screaming at the shit way, uh, to reveal that he's like 5'4", is a great... You couldn't script it like that. It's beautifully done. It would have been nice having, like, the uh, the kiss reveal when they took their makeup off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be great. So John comes up right to me and he goes, are you going to apologize for what you said to my children? And I tried the thing again. Like, John, I apologized on your stream. And I'm here to say I'm sorry. I'm here to squash this. I'm here to make peace. I'm sorry that I offended you. I'm sorry that I hurt you. But I'm not saying it right. You hear what I'm saying? I'm, I'm apologizing for the wrong thing. I'm apologizing for his interpretation of a troll. What's a troll? Yeah, you, we're talking about your daughter's arm. I'm, I'm sorry you were offended. That's that's the apology. Yeah. Melon, Melon, Melon's an odd guy because I find him funny in a lot of these exchanges. But what's always in the back of my mind with Melon is the only way I know him is getting fucked with by Red Bar. So it's weird to me that he's now orchestrating these bits and fucking with John in real life. Well, you learned from what some would say is the best. So. Learned from the greatest. That's true. That's a good point. But I'm sure Red. I'm sure he's. I, I, I'm sure he's going to get to the point where Red Bar takes a look again. <laughs> oh, well, maybe. Back yeah. Into. But, uh, but here, here's here's what I'll always say is like whatever whatever you think about Patrick in this exchange, at least he's kind of having fun with it. I don't think it's a great look. But John is like seething through this, and even when he goes on his stream the next morning, he's still in like a mopey attitude. Now Vince cheers him up, which we'll get to that as well, but. Uh, we got a uh, real quick Nick West five bucks. I've never been so excited to put something on my body. Me to that shirt, Craig to kids. That's not nice. Oh yeah, Cardiff, we'll give you one for free as a friend of the show. Do you want a convicted Craigophile shirt? No. Show him the image. Thank Craig. you. Thank you. <laughs> no. He doesn't need to see it. He's a <laughs> man of honor. Um, I'll put it back on the screen, I guess. <laughs> well, if you want one, Cardiff, just let me know your size. We'll get it to you. Uh, you do you want to wear that? <laughs> no. Thank you. No, I don't. <laughs> well, I would I, rather wear. I would rather wear some of the uh, super chats that John puts up on his show than that. <laughs> I, I guess Cardiff's a hack ride guy. What can I tell you? <laughs> uh, ben R. Two bucks. Thank you for being you, Mike. You got it, buddy. Um, Chris Bueller, ten bucks. Uh, you know what else is wild? There's a pic of Zumak with stuttering John, and they're the same height, both tiny little men. Oh, so Chad is there now. I think I saw him. And he performed. Uh, he performed last night. And, uh, oh, right. Of course. How can I forget? We're going to get there. Yes. <laughs> uh, Dang Lizard, five euros. KB and Broccoli planned a romantic weekend getaway, and it turned violent. AC is a modern Romeo and Juliet story. Yeah. Well, there's Hackrat is a theory that I think is pretty good that involves Kate Meany, which we'll get. Like, I forgot about that whole angle of it, but we'll get there, too. There's a lot to unpack. Hold on. Let me get this uh, gross shirt off my screen and pick a new video <laughs> blind mike.net gang <laughs> we'll have those up too sweet uh here we have him talking about when it got violent okay he goes to like do a two finger on my as high up as he can reach on my chest he's very short he's very minuscule man chi chi sized and yeah, he goes to like, I think, like, goes to like, you gotta apologize. And I just kind of like, belly I had my hand up. <laughs> and I kind of like, I don't even think it was on purpose. I think I kind of knocked it out of the way, just kind of like talking with my hand. And I've got a cigarette in one hand. And I've, and, you know, I'm, I'm not in a fighting stance. And at that point, I realized, like, oh, he's gonna swing. I, I knew he was gonna swing. He was, he's drunk, he's angry, and I, he wanted to fight. Like he wanted to, he wanted to fight. I'm surprised. The one thing, like that, 
I'm a little perplexed by with John is he says he says he wasn't drunk. That's the one thing he's like, I, w- I wasn't drunk, which is obviously we all know that's not true. But their stories pretty much line up, Patrick and John's. Like, I am a little surprised by how accurate John represented this situation. Yeah, but they they both saw and described the same thing, but both saw different outcomes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exact opposite outcomes from the same interaction. <laughs> But that's neither. Like, does Patrick think it was like a great victory for him? Because neither of them win um, in this. I w- I wouldn't say he thinks that. No, I think he's kind of just having fun with it. Whereas right. John thinks he's like, this is round one. I I beat my my nemesis Patrick Melton. Jo- John making a scene makes it a win for Melton. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like John losing so. control. Melton being calm, cool, collect. I'm just smoking a cigarette. Yeah, I'm just sitting here trying to hide my hump back. You know, I win. <laughs> I win in this case, right? Well, we're getting we're getting to Patrick analyzing my favorite part of this whole thing. Yeah, security here. Okay. Before you know it, this female security guard, I guess she called for people. And before you know it, there's nine security guards there. I know that because I counted them. I was like, <laughs> there are nine security guards here all of a sudden. And I mean, like ninjas out of nowhere. And he just starts, Stuttering John starts um, justifying his behavior and that he wants to beat me up because I talked about his children, as if the security guards are going to go, oh, sorry, we didn't know. Go ahead. <laughs> He's like, he, he talked about my kids. He made fun of my kids. Imagine being a 70-year-old man. I don't know how old John is. Screaming, he made fun of my kids. <laughs> that's That's... The greatest image of all is that John is saying, don't, don't you understand? Lady K wore a cow bikini, and that makes him effeminate. He has wood paneling in his basement. What aren't you getting? I think that's a great image, but uh, this next, this is our last clip from him. This is the image I've clung to. His wife is eight and a half years older than him. <laughs> but going back to the, sorry, just on that security, the uh, breaking news, Melton and Tukey said yesterday, that they heard from security that that woman security guard was fired. I just mentioned this. So I I wasn't sure if they were kidding about that or if that was real. It's again, what they, I don't, I don't know why the head of security for the Borgata would reveal personal private, you know, uh, staffing, (laughs) you know, (laughs) right. That does seem like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I've never known Tukey to lie. Melton, maybe, but Tukey has always been honest. So, Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's very. That, I heard them say that as well, and that's very odd. It doesn't seem like any. She did anything wrong because there was no right. melee. But right. well, but now then, as I as I was thinking about it though, it, it is Super Bowl weekend, so they might have brought in a bunch of temporary uh, people to help. Oh staff, yeah, so, so in, they, just, they yeah, could have said <laughs> right. They could have said, "Oh, she won't be around," and they took it as, "Oh, she's fired." Yeah. I guess she was done Sunday night anyway. Like that was her last day. It's like just take. Yeah, you don't. We don't need you Sunday. You, right. you can go. Uh, oh, Tuki! Just as an update, Tuki and Patrick, I did hear say they're not allowed to film at all today, uh, no. with, under threat of banning by MGM. Really? Yes. Um, jar for ten bucks, free free hack ride from Craig's basement. We'll try buy enough shirts, and we'll we'll try and get that straightened out. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is uh, the last clip from him, which I hope is true. Okay. So all the security guards come over. They split us up. Um, they take John over. John starts. I'm not kidding you. Ask Peter Sky Parker. This comes out of John's mouth. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> he says it. I wish I had my scream echo voice. I'm a celebrity. I'm stuttering John. To which everybody went. Hmm? <laughs> What's that now? So they split us up. He's over there. He's literally like walking them to the to the story of podcasts from ages gone by. <laughs> he's walk. He's walking them through it. He's like, "Buddy makes fun of my children on an internet stream." <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. There's a potato that menaces me, <laughs> and he's friends with a puppet. <laughs> um. 
David Lee Froth, five bucks. John literally said, I'm a celebrity in his drunken five foot glory. <laughs> hey, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here, huh? He nudges them. <laughs> oh, man. He had the. Uh, Melton played a. Uh, did you hear the tape of John and the Uber? No, I don't think I've heard that yet. Oh, Melton played it last night. I guess probably got it from Vince the lawyer, that rascal. Uh, oh. But John in an Uber filled with strangers. Okay. Like he just he needed a ride to the uh, to Gino and Chad's comedy show. Well, he was going to see Keanu. Obviously. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, but somebody in the Uber was recording, and John just goes through this whole. Let's start the story. I, I, they got me fired from all these gigs. I was a teacher. <laughs> like he's just doing his show in the back of an Uber for strangers. <laughs> you don't understand. So driver. Then the parents called me and said thank you for he, teaching my son and he bettering mentioned him. That. He mentioned the parents, the letters that he got. He mentioned Off all it. that in the back of an Uber. A seven-minute Uber it. ride. He crammed that in. <laughs> oh, man. He's, 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 he's the greatest, and he's just telling security. Like, yeah, that fucking uh, Bob Relevy and Silent Mike. <laughs> I'm, I, I, was, I went through his uh, stream last night to see if there were any nuggets from it. And at some point, someone asks him about Gina Levy, like her looks. He goes, she's pretty hot. Keanu was looking hot. <laughs> and he's just talking about these people's wives in such a gross ma It's like, John, fucking keep it in your pants, man. Have some goddamn class. Uh, we saw, well, I mean, he also had uh, Hitman Dan snorting cocaine on his stream. Mm -hmm. uh, there was that. Oh, I assume that's what was going on. But was it actually shown? Well, you saw his head go down. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> and then come back up. I mean, yeah. I don't know what else. Unless anything. he was smelling the radiator. <laughs> yeah, it could have been anything. <laughs> um, but now we have uh, John talking about what's going on here. Okay, so let's hear John's side of things. Get there at 10, well, no, 9. Flight, you got to board at 10, allegedly. And you'll see where I'm going. I don't want to get sued by... Sitting there at his bachelor party. <laughs> Big <Yeah>. time. <laughs> There's three or four guys, and I happen to sit next to the bachelor. And we start talking. You know, and I'm, you know, I, and they're going to Scottsdale. I said, so when you get married, we have the normal nice guy conversations. What do I do? What do you think I did? Guy's getting married. It's his bachelor party weekend. I buy him a pint of cone. Wow. $15 Ooh. pint. Ooh. Yeah, that's the kind of nice guy I am, Dwarfy. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't look for problems. I I'd rather help people. I had a long conversation with Kate Meany about it last night. Well, oh, boy. yesterday morning at one o'clock in the morning. And sweet conversation. And I really do think she's a sweet smart girl and we had a great talk and laughing and everything else. i just want to you know i know cardiff knows this but there might be some people watching that aren't aware of this uh kate meany daughter of kevin meany how is stupid. a woman <laughs> so she she was on john's show and then they've gone back and forth now could you rewind that just a little bit craig because i want you to hear how he describes a woman but first i'll tell you another way he's described her he says she has disgusting cellulite on her legs Mm -hmm. Fat, gross arms. <laughs> She's a bitch. She's a crunt. a crunt. He's called her, which is, I guess, his. I guess he's not allowed to say cunt on his show. So. Well, he has said it, but he just he, <laughs> he, he 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 later discovered the word crunt. Yeah, but yeah, he's he's talked <laughs> about what a, what a fat pig she is. Now, now let's hear when she answers his calls. Let's hear how he describes Kate Meany. <laughs> Yesterday morning at one o'clock in the morning. Sweet conversation, and I really do think she's a sweet, smart girl. And we had a great talk and laughing and everything else. She contacted me, so you know, before the trolls start saying I was stalking her, she texted me with a heart. She said, I'm trying oh. to call you, but you're not picking up, and then I called. But that's we'll get to that. I mean, it was it was really cute. She wrote love katie and put a little heart over the eye <laughs> <laughs> it was truly adorable i sent her an eggplant la -da -la, yada yada <laughs> eggplant firework winky face <laughs> <laughs> this is this next one is one of the uh the clips that i enjoy when you title them this one's called pretty cool oh this is 
Cardiff, if you think John looked like a fool this weekend, get ready to hear this story. <laughs> Vince tells me, just fly into Philly, and there's a 50-minute, 5-0 train ride directly from the Philadelphia airport to Atlantic City. This is this is the product Vince sells me in order to coerce me to come to Atlantic City to fulfill his own fantasies. It's not mine. I've been to Atlantic City a bunch of times. <laughs> and impregnated women there. Suzanne and I conceived a child in Atlantic City. <laughs> Cardiff, okay. Cardiff knows John before John even says it. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> I've been to Atlantic City, all right, pal. <laughs> if, if Unless NYU, you think I'm not awesome. <laughs> if NYU had a had a, a a degree in stuttering, John, I would. Uh, I think I would get my master's. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I like Cardiff in a tweed jacket, writing his name on the board. <laughs> Fit class. So I think John goes on to describe more about his exploits, right? With his wife and Atlanta Oh, yes. City. Where where they orgasmed, where yeah. they went after the let's orgasm. Hear, let's hear him describe the mother of his children, huh, Craig? <laughs> James, what position you used to conceive in? <laughs> I can't remember. I think it was missionary or doggy style. I know we had sex. She was at the sink. <laughs> And that was one, I believe that was one orgasm. And then uh, that was, if I remember correctly, that was one mind blowing <laughs> orgasm that I gave her. Does he think that's how kids are conceived as just female orgasms? Oh, he oh. has to come. <laughs> that's how the kids are made. The stork makes the woman come. When, when a woman orgasms, her uterus comes down and sucks the jizz right at her. <laughs> that's what an orgasm is. That the feeling they get is the uterus coming down to just pick up some sperm. <laughs> but John John really is a beautifully written character because that's how you would write a pompous asshole describing sex with the mother of his children where he's like, I mean, come on, guys. I don't even remember. I do remember I gave her a pounding over the sink once. That was one orgasm. Let's be, let me see if I have this correct. He had, no, you know, sex. Sorry, no, go ahead. What were you going to yeah, say? Yeah, no, there, there was something. I don't remember what it was, but I think it was uh... – from a uh, potato soup last week where it was just like you can't i think my line was you can't write writing like this yes no like, yeah it impossible. really is he's he's a beautiful character and if it was written the person should get an academy award because it's it's done so tastefully yes but by the way speaking of uh when's potato soup on because people should watch it regularly uh well usually sunday nights not this this sunday there's a little game going on make, tonight makes sense I, yeah I, I am i am putting out a special presentation tonight of frank d'angelo Card Electric special presentation. Do you know Frank D'Angelo, Blind Mike? Why does that sound familiar? I don't. I don't think I do, but maybe. So, so we met Frank D'Angelo a few weeks ago. I did a special on Ed the Sock, and uh, Frank D'Angelo is a millionaire businessman in Canada who uh, uses his money to make uh, late night talk shows, movies, music videos. Oh, okay. Like he he wants to be everything except uh, the businessman that he is, okay. and. Uh, so we're going to take a look at Frank D'Angelo tonight, and we're going to see some of his great films that he he paid Danny Aiello and and James Caan and, and like oh. huge, big Hollywood celebrities to come to Canada and make these shitty movies. Have you heard of uh, Sicilian Vampire? I, mean, I was just going to yes. say that. I was yes, just that's, oh, that's a Frank D'Angelo production. That's huh? A Frank <laughs> D'Angelo production. So uh, tune in tonight. Uh, I believe eight o'clock, premiering on my channel. Uh, we'll be learning a little bit about. Frank D'Angelo. Oh, I, I'm going to check that out. That's, uh, yeah, go do that, everyone. Back to John. Had, Shut up, Sal. You know, sex on the bed, so it could have been either one. Hobby at a airport security. <laughs> Sorry, that, I thought there was more there. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I made a eyes roll back into a head once, and then uh, <laughs> let me think. <laughs> did I have a moaning and ecstasy after that? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think of it. Uh, Joseph Collins, five bucks. I watched Melton Live and it was awesome. Cardiff rules. Thank you, Joseph Collins. Cardiff's um, the man. Drew P. Balls, ten bucks. Sent a super sticker. Thank you, buddy. Um, Jarb gave someone a membership for a month and it says free hack ride. <laughs> oh yeah, do that. Give give gifted memberships to people that don't want them. I think that could be a fun tradition. 
Yeah. Um, Janet, the evil lawyer, two bucks. John Melendez, slowly making all cool words uncool. <laughs> Uh, Janet the Evil Lawyer, again, two bucks. The worst brag ever. I've been to Atlantic City. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't think I've been there before, Vince? <laughs> oh, I've been there. <laughs> made you know my was... wife come in Atlantic City. <laughs> I was I was searching. There's, there's a whole bunch of uh, Atlantic City webcams. Like, a lot of casinos have webcams up for, uh, like, the boardwalk and stuff. I was hoping there was a Borgata one. I was hoping we would catch some stuff outside <laughs> on the webcam. <laughs> But no, uh, damn, that's too bad. Uh, here's John. John talking about the eye of the tiger. Oh yeah, so this is this is John's side of the story, really, and this is you can tell this is how John envisions himself. Like this is what's going through his mind when this. We watch the video one way. This is how John watches it. He apologizes because now he sees the eye of the tiger. <laughs> Which brings Pink me guy. back to Atlantic City. We all saw what happened in the cabbie fight. Donald Trump came backstage. Okay, this is came a back. non sequitur. This is completely out of nowhere. He just says, it's exactly like when I fought cabbie. Now, this is what I was thinking of. I mentioned David versus Goliath. He wasn't talking about Patrick Melton. This, nope. this is what he was talking about. And, now, and, and notice how now uh, Donald Trump is mentionable in this, in this case <laughs> Do donald trump had good judgment you yeah. know this is when this is before donald trump was a whack job right this is when he knew he was a smart guy John oh, yeah, yeah 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 well that's i mean the, what i always think about is do you remember cardiff when someone called john when john was beefing with opie a few couple months ago someone called him and said hey john it's anthony cumia and john just oh, believed yeah. it <laughs> and <laughs> in that instance talk. John was like, you know who's a great guy is Pocky. Yep. <laughs> now, of course, it wasn't Anthony Cumia. But the point is, all it takes is to also hate one of John's enemies. Like, if, if Carl called John today and was like, you, you, John, you owned Patrick Melton. Now let's take down the dues payer. Be like, Carl, I, your wife is beautiful. Thank you for giving me a call. <laughs> He flew he flew to Atlantic City for Vince the lawyer. Like he's trusting Vince the lawyer to cross the country thinking he, this guy's not going to fuck with me. Oh, what? <laughs> only because Vince the lawyer when they play a shuli bit, Vince will go, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Like that's oh. that's what convinced him to go to Atlantic City. <laughs> like me and Vince the lawyer think shuli sucks. Cardiff Cardiff knows John so well that he's spoiling like the next clips we have. <laughs> like, you know, he's three <laughs> steps ahead of us with John. <laughs> Uh, who are these podcasts? Ten bucks. Whoa! Uh, breaking nice. news: Kevin Brennan yelled at my brother last night, thinking it was me. Something about needing people to agree with me. I guess Pinky <laughs> was a bit tipsy. <laughs> yeah, last night was. Yeah, uh, there is a hamburger in Atlantic City. I had breakfast with him yesterday. And what are you uh, taking a nap here, Carl? What are you doing? <laughs> apparently, Levy had an altercation with uh, with brennan last night yeah, oh we, we have that. that we have that as well we have a lot yeah. to get to we're trying to go in order here uh, oh John you don't knows. jump around no 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 this isn't the jump around blind mic project <laughs> <laughs> it is in the sense everyone's having a great time right. so in attitude it is kind of yeah but. it's good uh john doe two bucks just hit the space bar and hit send that nice thanks buddy. um joseph collins five bucks uh john was wearing a backpack when he confronted melton stuttering john with a backpack what my god that changes everything <laughs> really does uh here we have continue the eye of the tiger <laughs> oh yeah we gotta hear the end of this donald trump came backstage howard came backstage all my friends Taj <laughs> my best and good said, buddies. john please call it off i won't be mad i don't want to see you to get hurt i looked at pause howard real quick cardiff you were a listener of the howard stern show I yes i listened to this live yes do you think if moments before the fight, John called it off, Howard would be like, okay, <laughs> no big <laughs> well, deal. Actually, yeah, I do. Oh, really? Because that would have made for great content for every other show after that. Like, they would have just shit on John as the chicken, right? It would have been sure, Tabby but that's coming like, in. it's an it event they had, they had set up and sold and everything. It, tickets are sold. They got the money. Guess so, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> they'll do something else. They'll put Beetlejuice out there to dance in the ring. They'll, they'll right, figure it fair. out. That's fair. All right. Maybe John's telling the truth. Let's continue. I said, Howard, I'm not calling off this fight and I'm going to win. 
that's the exact words, and Howard will definitely back me up on that. No, he goes, okay. uh, I can tell you, he won't. It may have happened, John, but he doesn't talk to or about you. <laughs> he won't. <laughs> to the point, like someone would say, like stuttering John to Howard, would be like, "Who? <laughs> oh, you guys don't think Dave Portnoy likes me right now? Go ask him. I dare you, ask him." Ask him. John always thinks he's talking like to these people. I, I want to believe that Howard and Gary just sit in the, you know, just sit around watching Dabbleverse stuff, just well, secretly that, giggling at John. <laughs> it's a great. it's a thought I had actually when I was watching the Bob Levy Kevin Brennan video, mm. but it applies to all of these where it's like the people in stand up and in radio and at the Stern show and all of that are watching these things no doubt i don't know if it's gotten back to like howard say but there are definitely people watching these that are like what has john come to or kevin brennan or any of these people like what are they doing with their lives and that's the same eye of the tiger that i had when i looked at patty and he saw it <clears throat> much like rocky when he saw mr t uh -huh. when he saw club of lang I didn't hear no bell. Patty, Patty, <laughs> be scared. He's rocky with this guy. Howard, Howard looked up at John and said, John, just do one thing for me. Win. Win. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Howard. I'll take down Fatty Patty. There's, there's a little kid out there that, that wants you to win this one for him, John. A little stutterer. A little stutterer. Uh, that was abused by a man that looked like a man with a hunchback many years ago. And he want do this one for him, John. I told some little cancer boy at the hospital I was going to win in round one. <laughs> uh, John, John's just charging at Patrick. This is for Howard. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? Just, just brave heart moment. He's just <laughs> charging. Across the field, Baba Booey. <laughs> uh, next, we have uh, using Vince. Okay, so this came from a moment when he's like, you know what, I'm fucking done with Vince. Except, here's where I'm not done with Vince. <laughs> uh, Mr. Sprinkles, thanks for the five. Carl from WATP tried to warn you about this lawyer. Carl was trying to help you. You should apologize, Lady K. Seriously, no, I've always. I don't need Lady K to tell me that Vince the lawyer is a troll. You do. I mean, it doesn't take anyone. Again, remember this. With even below average intelligence to know, like Carl has, to know that Vince the lawyer is a troll. We all know. Actually, that. very well said, John. It would take someone with below average intelligence, perhaps a low IQ, <laughs> to keep trusting Vince. You are. It's, it might be the most accurate thing he's ever said. But at this point, it's what can I get from him? Oh. And that's what it's all about to me. The truth you all say out. I'm too cheap to buy for a room. Now, let's see how much I can get Vince to spend. So the troll is on, is me trolling him in all <laughs> actuality because ah. I ain't paying for shit. First of all, spoken like a true troll, revealing your entire plan on a podcast. <laughs> but also spoken like a man of means. You know how a lot of times Elon Musk love, loves to tweet. He'll tweet sometimes like, hey, can any anyone donate me a few beers? I'm trying to get through the day. <laughs> John, John sounds like the uh, someone who, you know, signs up for all these timeshare meetings. I got a free weekend in the Poconos. Didn't matter <laughs> that I had to spend 12 hours getting harassed by salespeople. I got one over on them. I got one over on them. Nah, nah, nah. Bernie Madoff would never troll me. He seems like a good money manager. Yeah. Look at what he did for the Will Ponds. <laughs> um, next we got uh, nothing gets by John. No, he's uh, he's got a keen eye for for BS. Somebody walks in, this idiot, and you'll see why I call him an idiot with a white college shirt. And sits next to me while I'm on the phone with Leo Gunn. <laughs> and he's sitting next to me. He goes, hey, I'm a fan of the Dabbleverse. Boom. I know immediately this guy's up to no good. <laughs> 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 this guy, I, Boom! <laughs> something, 
<laughs> I my my spidey senses were tingling when this man was wearing a Gagia shirt <laughs> and pointing and laughing at me. I said, I think something might be up. <laughs> Where'd you get that defund the hypocrisy police shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Are you up to no good? <laughs> Uh, 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 next week we got uh, him borrowing money we're talking about borrowing money oh okay I don't remember this but and you know and then now I'm going to play him I go okay uh, well look um, uh, you know I maxed out my uh, credit card oh so I this go, is the guy this uh, is <laughs> this is the guy that is is uh, you know I something something within me just told me he's fucking with me this is the dabble verse guy this is how John treats just like fans of his or even just strangers, I guess. So if this is what he's admitting to, imagine what his day-to-day -day life is like. Hell. Cash left, but he goes, I'm playing Hold'em. I go, well, look, if you could spot me a hundy, I'll I'll play I'll play Hold'em with you. <laughs> because I know I got like I know the guy's trolling me. But again, if oh. I can get a few of them, I'll take it. Hey, fuck it. Sure. Oh. Sure, you hear that all the time. If I, I mean, I wish I had a nickel for every time I heard podcasters being like, oh, fuck. I went to the comedy mothership this weekend, and Joe Rogan was just asking me to spot him a hundy. Because, you know, sure, he signed a $250 million deal with Spotify. But if he can get a hundy out of me, why wouldn't he? Um, we, got two, we got Tukey here. Oh, Tukey's here as well. All right, now it's a party, baby. Yeah. Bring it Whoa! Can you hear me? Do I yeah. okay? Tukey, your Sorry. debut on the Blind Mike Project. How are you, buddy? Oh, I just woke up. Oh, <laughs> shit. I, I, my first question for you, Tukey, and this is not this. I, this goes to the room. It could be directed at anyone. Mm -hmm. Of all the the embarrassing things we've seen this weekend, where would you rank having to? hide on camera so you could hold a puppet up i'm just saying hypothetically <laughs> if you know anyone that has done that in a room with say patrick melton yes uh no that has been the uh easiest thing to do all weekend uh yes it's been quite an experience so far uh unfortunately we haven't been able to capture a lot of video because we were threatened that we would be bob levied in atlantic city if we did that <laughs> so i yeah, don't know so did this security guard really get fired we don't know he kind of just said it in jest he was like i'm here to tell you guys you know if anything else happens you're all going to be trespassed uh the lady the, the girl uh who was here last night she's been let go because she didn't do her job but it was yeah yeah i don't know i guess she was and then i think someone else was in trouble because of what happened between kevin and bob so, yes, the dabble verse is costing people their jobs. Jesus Christ. Could we play that now, Craig, the uh, Kevin and Bob thing since Tukey's here? Were you there for Good this? old jump around Tukey? blind Mike, huh? There he is, jumping around. <laughs> mm -mm. No, Tukey was upstairs live streaming or grifting, as everyone was saying. Sure. We we're just trying to update you losers. And then all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, Tukey and Melton were too worried about getting money from people. They missed everything. No, mm. we were trying to update you. We were going to update you that John approached us again, that Kevin was here. We did all that. We didn't know. Bob was supposed to come up and do the show with us. He showed up late, and then we went up to do the show, and then we asked him to come up, and he ignored us. And I don't know. I, I, I honestly, all I have seen is the video, and then I talked to the people who were there, like beloved Chata. Of course. So uh, how would you say the turnout has been so far? Fantastic. It's been oh, fantastic. Good. It's really cool to meet all the listeners and even all the pseudo celebrities. Like Keanu. <laughs> I, I met Keanu. Yay! I heard she was and looking she, hot. Was that, is that an accurate report? <laughs> she was very, very uh, pretty. Yes, she looked very nice. And uh, yes, oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's, uh, we're having a great time. Except for Bob Levy, I guess. So, and can you speak to Tukey? Oh, sorry, Cardiff. Go ahead. I was going to say, just check your Twitter DMs. I sent you. Huh? Well, I can't see Cardiff, so send it to Craig. I can't do that. <laughs> um, what Tukey? We were talking about Patrick Melton before. What is his 
attitude right now? Because we were wondering, like, does he think he got over on John? Is he just having fun with it? What's the what's the mood in Camp Melton right now? Um, so we can't. It's hard to get a read on Kevin Brennan because he came in and went right to the poker table, and no one knew he was here. Right. So then Tukey and one of the listeners went over to try and go see Brennan, but he uh, left his seat, and they said, oh, don't worry. He he just went to the bathroom. He'll be right back. Tukey waited around for about eight minutes and said, I guess he's taking a dump, and I don't really <laughs> want to just be here. I don't know how he's going to react to just seeing me. Right. So we, I left. I was like, ah, I'll see Kevin later. So then uh, we were over by the B bar in uh, Borgata. That's pretty much uh, – like the rendezvous point. Everyone Yeah, I've heard that referenced a lot. Yes. And uh it really is like a middle school dance. Like I, I said, like there are groups of people and they're all kind of staying away, especially because of what happened on night one. Because everyone's been warned. If if anything else happens, unfortunately, I don't think Bob knew about that. But <laughs> everyone was warned. If anything else happens, everyone will be kicked out. You'll all be trespassed on MGM premises and all this shit. So we all just kind of I've been in uh Melt Camp. There's the John camp, which is like Vince the lawyer, John, right, whoever else. Um, and then there's just some like randos, randoms. And uh, but yeah, so Kevin Brennan left the poker table and started coming to the B bar, and he was eating like pizza or something. And when, once he saw John's group, he started giving up like the middle finger and like fuck, whoa, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> and to the point where even Vince the lawyer reached over. You know how Kevin was like higher than Bob in that video? Yeah. 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 So that's Tukey, can Vince... I say before before you get any crazier, I just want you to know we are on the air. I don't know if you want to be this edgy publicly. I didn't <laughs> realize Kevin got so crazy. Oh, no. Yes, yes. <laughs> so but then so Vince the lawyer was like he looked serious and like and he was like kind of like, oh no, no, like go like they were kind of pushing Kevin away. But then everyone started kind of laughing. So we thought everything was good. But then Kevin started making his way over towards the NLO group. And uh, he just kept going, you don't want none of this. You don't want oh. none of this. <laughs> oh, God. So it was weird. So I was like, oh, I, I feel like he's kidding. Okay. And then and then a beloved chatter named T.O. Hawk was like, come on, I'm going to introduce you to Kevin. So he went over to Kevin and was like, hey, over there, that's Tukey. And T.O. Hawk was like signaling me to come over. So yeah. I started to approach Kevin. And a security guard literally walked in the middle of our path and put their hands on my chest and said, no. I was like, what? I'm just going to say hi. He's like, no, not right now. Really? So, so we didn't know. And then Kevin was still going, you don't want none of this. You don't want none of this. It wasn't like oh, Kevin. It was, it's, not, it's not like oh, Kevin was like, no, 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 it's fine. I, you know, I'll shake his hand. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe Melton's right. Because Melton was convinced, no, uh, Kevin doesn't want to see me. I'm not approaching Kevin. He told me not to approach yeah. him. So was this his own security, you think? or was it no, it was, no, it was Borgata. No. Okay. I think. Did yeah. he warn them, hey, if a if a puppet comes up to me? I don't know. <laughs> but here's the thing. Before Kevin showed up, we were in our group by one part of the B-bar, and then John's group was inside the B-bar. And three security guards strategically lined up next to us. And we kind of made a joke. We are like, oh, check it out. They're here for us. We're, we're the gang, the dabble gang or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, nah. And then all of a sudden, a fourth guy came by, and he did. He said, hey. We just want you guys to know no more recording on the Borgata grounds, like in the casino. If you do, if anyone's recording anything, you will be trespassed. We're going to go tell the other group now. And uh, so we didn't really want to press our luck. And we figured, wow, there's so much stuff going on. We should go up and update everyone because everyone who's not here is constantly wanting updates. So we went up there to update. And then Bob showed up. He called uh, Patrick. And we said, Bob, come up. You know, we're doing a show. And then Bob just hung up. And then everything, then this happened. Jesus Christ. This, this, yeah, so yeah. let's play the uh let's play the video, correct? It's crazy. Should I skip past the walk? Yeah, you can walk. probably I don't need to hear this woman singing. <laughs> Here we go. Just losing his mind. Oh. Violence. What is? Pause real quick. What is there? Do you guys know their core issue? Is it just that Bob works with Shuli? Like, why do they hate each other? Well, they blew uh, off. I mean, they did the show together, and they 
broke ties. I feel like that happens right. every other week, though. Right. That's what I mean. Is like I, I don't watch Kevin's show, so my knowledge of it is just like uh, Bob's off the show this week, and then a week later he'd be back, and then and then just uh, all of a sudden I noticed Bob wasn't on there anymore. So I don't know what the beef is. Uh, there's also a claim that Kevin owes Bob money. I believe. Okay. For the show. All right. Interesting. Uh, John Doe, two bucks. I am the guy from Maryland in the white collared shirt. Oh, hello, John. Good, good to meet you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Joseph Collins, two bucks. Kevin legit screwed Bob. I think the guy from Maryland was the guy who approached John and said, I drove all the way from Maryland to see a has been. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were we were saying earlier, like, where'd that guy go? I wonder if he literally just drove in. Well, I don't know. Fuck you, John, and left. <laughs> but also Peter Sky Walker or whatever, he was here the first night, and every night one said he was at staying at the Borgata, and we have not seen him since the first night. So he might be wow. dead. This is a star-studded <laughs> event you're at, Tuki. Jesus, everyone's here. If you're not here, <laughs> you are Cardiff. Well, I, I appreciate you hopping on with us. Let's uh, go back to the Oh, video. no, I literally just woke up. I was playing poker until about 4 a.m. So, well, guys, go if you don't already subscribe to uh, the B Dabblers channel, go watch Tukey Soup and everything he does there, for God's sake. Uh, can I just ask, uh, how'd you do? Oh, I did good. I uh, I won 150 bucks in about five hands, and then the table broke up, so I was kind of done, oh, but uh. Sucks. And then I just played some blackjack and I kind of evened out. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm up about 150 bucks. Yay! You know what? You know what I think is great is that there are people there that will have a story like, yeah, there were these groups of like I don't know, 50, 60 year old guys that were mm-hmm. like kind of staring each other down all weekend. I don't really mm-hmm. know what was happening, but it was weird. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, I haven't. Uh, I haven't actually. Oh, so there was also an instance. Uh, instant where John tried to approach Melton again and negotiate with Melton, which was basically, Melton, do everything I said you should do, and then everything sure. will be good. Uh, yeah, but John is... John looks like the troll from Ernest Scared Stupid. Like He's very <laughs> tiny. How he's, tall would you say? If you had to give an accurate height, what would you guess? Uh, Maybe like 5'4". Wow. In that area. He swears he's 5'8". He really sucks. Uh, no, oh, definitely not. <laughs> I, I thought 5'6". We narrowed, we narrowed it down to... I think from I mean, the cabbie fight, he was he was he was announced as five six. If we can get Vince the lawyer's height, that might be easier because they're pretty much the same height. They're both very tiny. John is very gr- like John's skin color is a weird gray. Like everything you see on the camera is him. Uh, his liver spots. The reason <laughs> the reason you can't see his ears, well, because his earlobes are weird. He almost has no earlobes. They fuse to his neck. Mm-hmm, quite mm-hmm. a creek, quite a goblin yes. you're describing. So, yes, he's a goblin. <laughs> Fantastic, like a ghoul. But yes, uh, so he came by and, and uh, unprovoked again, he came up to Pat because I think uh, Dirty Deeds, who's another beloved Chata, was trying to negotiate some kind of peace between John and Melton. And uh, so, again, what John came up with was, well, if he meets all my demands, we're good. So that was the compromise. And he basically came by again and said, Melton, listen, everything's fine if you just apologize for trashing my kids. And Melton's like, no! <laughs> so, wait, you're not, so, you, so, uh, so, so you're not, so you're not going to apologize for trashing my kids. And he's like, I didn't trash your kids. I was doing a show. And no, your kids are not kids anymore. And he's like, right. yes, they are. Yes, they are. Right. Fuck, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. No, no. And the line was, his age. No, the she's exact, just a kid. The exact line was, "They're adults," and he screamed, "No, they're not." <laughs> yeah, no. so, well, yeah. They're That's trans. <laughs> no, they're not. They're my babies. Now, has John interacted with you at all, Tuki? Does he know you're there? No, he... no, no. So uh, Vince, the lawyer, kept messaging me all day. Where are you? You wop, you greasy dago. Let's go. Come on. Where are you? And I never I never messaged him until about 2.30 in the morning while maybe they were still on. And I said, hey, I'm here. Where are you? And then he, t- he invited me to John's room. And I was like, I'm not going in to that hornet's nest right now. I'll see you tomorrow. So. I'll probably see them tomorrow. I think I'm going to dress up like Gino today. I have some headbands 
And I have a shirt that says, hello, my name is Gino Bascante, professional comedian. <laughs> that is how Gino needs to introduce himself at shows, I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I did not meet Gino. I did meet Keanu. I, I, I introduced myself and she was very nice. And like we said, she she looks very pretty. Sure. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, no, John. John looked at me right in the face when he was talking to Melton, but he didn't know who I was. He was kind of looking at me like, "What are your What are your predictions, guy? <laughs> what are your predictions for today? Are you going to confront John at all, or do you think there's it, it, will more I'm happen not, today, or are we done? I'm not looking to confront like." I said, give me questions to ask John because I thought there would be an opportunity where maybe we would all be sitting at a poker table and playing poker or something. Yeah. That seems less and less likely to happen. I don't know. But today's my first full day here. Uh, so I don't know what anyone has planned. I would like to play poker with some people. I would like to play poker with Kevin. I actually saw Kevin after the show. Uh, Melton stayed upstairs and I actually saw Kevin. He was in a better mood. And he said, where's that fat fuck Melton? And I said, uh, he's in his room. He said, you do not want him to approach you. So he's not going to approach you. He's like, I don't. I said, okay. I said, okay. Uh, and so don't like, send him my way. Yes. So I was like, okay, then we're doing exactly everything you told us. And yeah. he's like, uh, are you here tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. So that's where I left off with Kevin. So I think maybe you, well, you better not friend. see me tomorrow then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But yeah, I think Kevin and Tuki are now best friends again, I guess, okay. off that Excellent. interaction. And then uh, I don't know. I haven't talked to Melton. I haven't seen Melton. So like I said, I literally just got up and I went, oh, shit. It's fucking so late. far, so far, Tuki, winners and losers. And really, I'm asking you, is has there been a winner of this weekend? Is there anyone that's come out on? Oh, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, the Borgata. Yes, the Borgata. Yeah. I don't know. No, that poor lady security guard lost her job, so she is a loser. Bob was yeah. kicked out. He is a loser. Melton apologized to John, as everyone is claiming, so he's mm -hmm. a loser. Mm -hmm. uh, KB. Imagine, I, KB's all right, I guess. I don't know. Can you imagine that, that security guard has a case against the Borgata? You guys all get subpoenaed. Oh. Come back to Atlantic City to testify. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Uh, oh, I think a big winner is Grant, Carl's brother. Because oh yes, I heard about this. So did John you get to meet Grant as well? Him. Yes, I've met I've met Grant a couple of times, but I did see Grant and Chrissy here. Uh, they they've been hanging out with the John clan a lot. Uh, but yeah, and so I guess John and uh, Grant have talked, and John has said Grant is an amazing person he's a great guy <laughs> great guy it's a shame his father has cancer <laughs> but I actually i think maybe john's a winner here because john does seem to be having a good time uh around you know people even if it's just a small group or whatever he seems to be enjoying the fact that there are people here that are hanging out with him and i was you know like i was, I was gonna say no one's outlook on him has changed at all from john, these john did the least damage to his representation yeah. his reputation mm -hmm. of anyone yeah yeah, I, don't know, I kind of felt bad for him in that first night video a little bit. Uh, but then, you know, you think of all the yeah. things he said and done. and Well, not even that, Tuki. And here's, on, on the surface, if you're just looking at it, you do feel bad for John. You're looking at a video mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, a guy can't have a beer at a bar. I feel bad for him. Yeah. But then you think to yourself, like last night, right. I went out in Boston, the big city. Mm -hmm. Went out to dinner and a show, had a lovely evening. And no one, believe it or not, harassed me. And oh. the main reason I avoided that is because I went to Reddit and I looked at the page dedicated to mocking me. Mm -hmm. And I said, are they gathering at any particular Boston <laughs> area? And yes. when I found that place, I avoided it. <laughs> yes. It is, I still question why John came here. I do think that John <laughs> thought he was going to stroll into the Borgata and there would be a sea of people cheering like he's here. Yay! Yeah. And he'd fix his sports jacket that his brother borrowed uh he borrowed from his brother you know you know tighten up his uh arrow pastel graphic tee and be like i am here my people i am here your dabbler is here the goat it's it's what? rupert pupkin he really yeah. thinks he's gonna have the moment of john yes. we were wrong and you you were right like he well, truly believes that moment is coming mm -hmm. did well, you hear any audio go ahead Oh, yeah, no, I talked about it on WDP yesterday when he when he was the video of him <clears throat> ranting 
with the security guard and he's yelling like, this guy trashed my kids mm -hmm. what i envisioned that was was you know he's he's going back. atlantic city is a lot like long island this is home field advantage for john as soon as right. people in atlantic city hear this guy trashed someone's kids like people are going to arise from their slot machines and join him <laughs> to just throw Melton out of the casino. How dare you trash someone's kid? Not in Jersey. Not well, in Long Island. I mean, he, no. he knew in California and Vegas, Melton could get away with trashing kids, but oh, not yeah, of course. in Jersey. Well, Melton gave, made a great point when John was like, they were trashing my kids. One of the security guards should have been like, Wait, you mean your kids are here? They're, they're <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. Are they at the daycare? Are they at the arcade? Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sentence must make no sense to an outsider. He's no. trashing my kids. Yes. I mean, <laughs> what do you yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> they didn't like what they ordered. What are you talking about? <laughs> so stupid. Did you guys hear the audio from the show last night at all? Um. No. No. The actual stand up. Yes. No. So we had uh, we had exclusive audio. Vince, the lawyer, got us audio of the car <laughs> ride from the Borgata. Oh, Cardiff club. mentioned this, yeah. yeah. Yes. So we have recording of John. John was placed in an Uber with a bunch of beloved chattas. Okay. But he was under the impression that they had no idea who he was. So for the seven-minute car ride from the Borgata to the club, John gives everything everything you've you could literally cut the seven minutes down and go okay this is the john melendez podcast because is that available can we hear this is that out there right now uh i don't it's not out there in its entirety but it was on melton's stream from last night oh, okay. uh, i'll tell him maybe to somehow get it or maybe i'll get it and we could post it somewhere but okay yeah he go and he starts telling these people like yeah, you saw, I boxed here one time. I boxed this guy named Cabby. <laughs> and then he's telling them. I had the eye of a tiger. <laughs> yes. Hold on. Hold on. Is Jersey a two-party state? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, we're just talking about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you can't even talk. You know, in a two-party state, you can't even talk about a recording. <laughs> yes. So uh, then... Uh, so then he starts telling them about because I think someone asked like, "Oh, are you performing at the comedy show or something?" So then John goes into this big spiel about how the the listeners all cost him his stand up gigs, and then he got fired from his teaching, and he started explaining about how the kids love me when I would conjugate a verb or whatever. I would, <laughs> boom, boom. He's telling these people that he thinks are strangers. His whole life, like his whole resume, his whole life story was fantastic. But I want, but there was a better part where during this whole show, it seemed like people were just talking. Like half the audience was just there to either be at the bar or have dinner. And then the other uh, half of the audience, I guess, was for the show. So there was a lot of talking. So literally in between one of the comic sets, John gets up, stands in the middle of the room, turns to the audience and goes, uh, everybody, uh, can we like, quiet down and show some respect for the next two comedians i mean come on you know it's the it's the right thing to do no one asked keanu john to do this coming. yes because <laughs> keanu was coming up. well no because oh Ke a yes. white knight was riding in you're saying mm -hmm. yes it's insane <laughs> that that that's that's insane but yes john is having uh i think this is a weekend they can never take away from john i think john is having a great time but what's what's amazing is this is a month. Yesterday was a month to the day that John was supposed to be performing in Rochester. Tickets oh, yeah. sold, like <laughs> money to be made for John. He could have had that moment. Yeah, he could have had that moment there where people were actually buying tickets to see you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, and I think it, I, th I think it's better that people show up and try. And I think the event John wants is that eight degenerates show up to film him uh -huh. and, and laugh at his hijinks. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I said. I said that from the very beginning. I, I, I always thought John would be here because he doesn't have to do anything. So he, why not? And uh, right. Brock Lee has promised him money. However, <laughs> we have been told that Brock Lee has not shown up yet. And we're sh expecting him today. So those two pictures that I thought were Brock Lee on my Twitter, everybody stand back, stand by, stand down. Those are not <laughs> Brock Lee. Those are just random Asian guys. Um, do, okay. Go ahead, Craig. No, I was just going to read Super Chats. Good. I was just going to ask if you guys had predictions. Do we think Broccoli is someone we already know, or is it a new character? I think it's someone we already know. The only hints we have, really, 
is that he once messaged John, John, you're not going to want to have a drink with me once yeah. you meet me. Right. Yeah. I wonder, maybe it's Grant. Maybe he's already there. Oh, there was a rumor that people <laughs> thought it might have been Carl, but Grant is fantastic. That's a good That's guess. interesting. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, Mall of America, two bucks. The John Kate rom com ends at the airport. Mm -hmm. No Kate Meany. <laughs> Kate Meany is not here. No, uh, but John, what John did call her the other night on his yes. so, uh, laying on his belly with his legs kicking up in the air. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, you hang up. Oh, you hang up. <laughs> oh, you're so cute, Kate. <laughs> Uh, uh, lawyers, guns, and money. Two bucks. Tukey rebel forces are moving against the Borgata. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe from Virginia. Two bucks. Love the show, Mike. Keep up the good work. Thank you, buddy. You don't know how badly I want the Borgata security to break in that room right now and remove Tukey <laughs> from the building. <laughs> <laughs> Tukey's not at the Borgata. Tukey's in a, a, a different location. <gasps> Harris next door. Oh no, I doxed myself. Oh, I was gonna say you showed the chips last night, so I thought. Yes, I know. I was wondering. Yeah, I uh, Craig, I think we're I think we're sticking on John and Atlantic City for the rest of the episode. Do you want to do it? We could do another episode tomorrow with everything else if you're up for it. Ah, uh, that should well, work. I right. was actually I was gonna say I I, I kind of have to go. I have some people. Uh, showing up, but I wanted to give you some time. Knocking uh, angrily against the door. Thank, thank you, Tukey. <laughs> are there a, are there any other questions you guys had that maybe I can help answer? I think that you covers. It all. Is there anything you think we didn't cover? You do anal? No, I mean, <laughs> do I do anal? <laughs> yes, that's a of good course. question. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, no, I was trying to think. I think. I mean, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, but yeah, Tukey is just having a great time and meeting all the uh, fans and beloved Chattas. Has just really been uh, an experience, and it's great. Uh, I will. We will have more updates today. Excellent. Subscribe to NLO. We seem to be doing them on his channel. I might try to do a show tonight on my channel or something to okay. grift you all. Nice. Good, 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 good. But uh, yeah, other than that, I don't know. I don't think. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, it was a very exciting night. I don't like. I said, I don't know. All the details of what happened with Bob and Kevin. Some. Oh, oh, I actually do. So, I guess when that was all happening, Bob <laughs> threw the drink on Kevin, right? And he tried we to jump that rail. That video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We never really finished the video. So, Bob threw the drink at Kevin. They were cursing. He tried to jump that rail. And apparently, oh. beloved Chata had to tackle Bob because at one point, Bob grabbed a broom from like a janitor cart <laughs> and was trying to attack Kevin Brennan with a broom. This is a cartoon. Is there an anvil drop on both of them? <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I was shocked when I heard that this had all gone down while we were upstairs. Shocked right. and appalled. Well, Tukey, go wreak havoc today, buddy. Thank you for uh, stopping by and giving us some of your time. Of course, anytime. I love you all more than a friend. Yeah! Uh, are you still doing lunch? What? Oh, yeah, Cardiff doing... is here. Shh. Oh, I mean, yes, we're doing lunch. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Are right, you good to stick around for a while, or you got to go too? I got, I got about five more minutes. Okay, I can just Let's, leave uh, now. Then, <laughs> yeah, get the hell out of here. Then. <laughs> Seems uh, like guys, a good go, spot for transition. No, yeah, go, I go follow Carter in the middle of this video. <laughs> we'll get back to the Kevin. Let's get back to John, and we'll sure. get to Kevin and Bob later. We'll finish that video later. Sure. All right. Uh, so that was his. Uh, uh, this was just the last clip. It was just him. Sounding ridiculous. It's nine seconds, so I'll just play it real quick. Oh, okay. Penis wrinkle. Why didn't you tell Patty go outside? I did. I said, let's go outside. Don't you hear me say that, penis? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Please, John, my father was Mr. Wrinkle. Please call me penis. <laughs> and just just for the for the context, uh, when you started that clip, there was a twenty dollar super chat from Christina Marie. Mm-hmm. Two minutes before that, John was screaming that nobody's even given him a twenty dollars super chat. You cheap fucks! <laughs> so is that, that was a direct response to John is constantly yelling. But what I what I love Cardiff is when when he goes at Kevin and Kevin's bitching about uh, broccoli and all these super chatters. Then John is like, "I'm grateful for every dollar I get." <laughs> You know what? It, there, I was I was clipping for potato soup. I think it was last week, and he had the, even the two dollar ones. 
I love even the two dollar one, but but literally three days before, I couldn't find the clip. He was screaming, "I'm not reading these two dollars super chats." Not for two dollars. You're not gonna shit on me for two dollars. The the I I need to really build a database of all the things that John says because it's 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 too hard to archive everything. (laughs) No kidding, (laughs) it's a lot. Uh, Now we got uh, the next stream, which if everyone's been paying attention, yeah. So remember how much. He hated Vince. The lawyer is dead to me. I'm now. I'm just using him. Uh, I want to see how much I can get from him. All he hates the one guy that John hated after Friday was not even Patrick Melton so much. It was Vince the lawyer. Mm-hmm. Oh, telling him how fast. <laughs> <laughs> he's too retarded. I'll take it. I don't care about. It. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He's going to destroy you for that, John. (laughs) (laughs) Just such good friends, they can't stop laughing. Yeah, so Vince is Vince gets to fuck with John again. I don't know what this guy has to do for John to quit Vince. There's nothing. It seems like they're bonded for life, no matter what Vince does. His contract. (laughs) It's it's Cardiff. Let me throw this theory at you. Yes. Before you get out of here, Please. does is is it possible that John and Vince? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? So, sorry, it's a visual gag, Mike. A visual gag. <laughs> he just left. Right? <laughs> oh, that's very funny. <laughs> it would be a great like if I just sat here. I, the question I'm about to ask should be the last question I ever ask in my life. And I should just sit here waiting for someone to respond. But is it possible that John is like, John and Vince are working together to constantly make us think that Vince is trolling him? That's the only possible explanation as to why John always forgives him. I mean, that would make, that would explain a lot of things. Yeah. That really would. But no, Vince is, I I still don't understand Vince, but that, I'll, I'll always go back to Vince as a piece of shit based yeah. on the Artie Lang video. The Artie Lang at the gas station video. If you guys have oh, seen that's that. right. I, I always yeah, forget that's that. him. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So putting it in that context, no, Vince isn't working with anybody. Everybody's working for Vince. Right. As, as, far, as, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, they, but there's no explanation for why John keeps going back. There's no, there's no, I mean, other than he's desperate and needs the free beer and 7-Eleven hot dogs. Right. And he really is using Vince, or Vince is sending him money on the side, like, hey, this is where, like, there's got to be something. I sent Craig the video, I don't know if you want to play it, of Vince. Uh... <laughs> Vince, <laughs> no. at one point in Vince's stream, he was in John's room. Uh, John had forced, John had to tie the, so the door in the suite to the bathroom was like a double door. Yeah. A French door that I guess couldn't lock properly. Okay. Mm-hmm. And... John tied the door knob, the door handles together, so Vince couldn't come in while he was in the shower. So I'm like, you're, you're, you have this guy. You don't trust this guy not to come in with a camera. So at least there is some semblance of uh, sense. With yeah, John. He's, aw- he he's aware he's not supposed to trust him, yet yes. still does. <laughs> but but Vince still jammed the doors open enough to put up some footage of John in his underwear getting ready to take <laughs> yeah. a shower. So. Uh, Craigers has that if you ever want. Uh, <laughs> I guess I guess Vince is just the equivalent of like crazy pussy, where it's like he might burn down your fucking house, but by God, does he is he a good lay for John? I guess. But may, or it just is like John's had such a shitty life the past ten years. Yeah. That an, a weekend in Atlantic City is an, is worth it. Yeah. Like it's it's enough. I'll okay. I'll, I'll put up with it for this. Yeah. Right. Uh, this one is just labeled "This guy is a lawyer" with a question mark. Yeah, this, so Vince, he's an attorney, and they they keep mentioning that he's worth like millions of dollars. So I assume he does very well. But this is how he's spending his free time. John, have you ever hooked up with a black guy? No. Would you? No, I'm fine. No. Racist. <laughs> oh, on, up and cheat on you. Oh, yeah, yeah, girls love doing that. <laughs> the only way the to get back at your husband is to bang a black guy. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? This guy's representing people in court? Allegedly. 
I enjoyed John's uncomfortable, I have friends, let me look at the camera while I laugh really hard face. And that's another thing, by the way, John will laugh at anything. If Carl made that joke, John would be playing it like, you see, Lady K is a racist. <laughs> but but he needs friends, so when it's John and Hitman Dan and Hitman Dan's wife, then it's all in good fun. Then we can all have a laugh, I guess. Uh, next we got uh, Tough Guys. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, this I mean, listen, they're from Long Island, so, you know. I don't want to see if Cardiff could just spoil every clip before he plays. <laughs> and not the pussy part of Long Island. <laughs> Bullies, out of my, like, in other words, Danny, 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 didn't we always get into brawls, you know, as kids and shit? Yeah. And the mall. Cool. Yeah, the mall. And how about fucking, Spence's like, gifts. you know, on Thanksgiving Eve when that guy fucking cheap shot at me in the face and I was fucking, you know, I got stitches on my fucking lower lip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he points his upper lower lip, lip as he's described his lower lip. He can't feel his face anymore. <laughs> That's how many stitches he got, Cardiff. He went all the way around. <laughs> Page. Yeah, we, or Hicksville. We had to fight. We were Dan, have you ever hooked up with any of John's sisters? No. But you like, but you like Joyce's big titties, though, Danny. Oh. <laughs> it's a real pig of a man. He's talking about his fucking sister. I guess that makes the uh, the army major clip when he wouldn't stop talking about his wife make more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that but, to his sister. Uh, but this is this is a great glory days example where it's dry. Hey Dan, remember when we were outside of Wetzel's Pretzels? And the guy started mouthing off to me because I was taking too long deciding if I wanted it salted or unsalted. <laughs> uh, this is the last clip from these two. Okay. Uh, that's called Best Buds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these, this, is a, this is an unbreakable bond here. All right. Thanks for my bucks. You were shitting on Vince this troll this morning. Yes, no, I was. He, didn't. he wanted to take away my entire livelihood by contacting yes, the bar that's true. because he left me a voicemail. That's true. I wanted to beat the fuck out of him. I, I was so pissed off at him. But, I mean, we were past that, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look. No. Yeah, but he, Dan, he always trolls, and, and then we make up. It's the same story. Then we fuck. Uh, but wouldn't you say, Vincent, of all the guys in the Dalvers, I'm like your closest friend in the Dalvers? No. <laughs> Who is? No. Hell no. Well, it, Bob is. But... Oh, okay. <laughs> this is before that incident, by the way, I think. <laughs> Those cold, dead Botox thighs. <laughs> <laughs> but that is ultimately everything John needs, where he's like, Vince, wouldn't you say I'm your best friend? And Vince in is like, In the Dabbleverse. No. no, in the Dabbleverse, though. <laughs> like, just within this small community. <laughs> Not overall, just Listen, in this world. In this I, room. Am I your best friend in this room, Vince? I, I I like the dabble verse. I think I it's been it's been a very fun environment to watch happen. I like Cardiff and Carl and all these people. I don't give a fuck if any of you guys consider me a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Cardiff. But your level of friendship to me is valueless. <laughs> and you can go fuck yourself too, blind Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I take it back. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Uh, we got a couple of uh, bleach. <laughs> we got a John tweet after the incident here. Oh, okay. Let's hear that. Uh, he said, Hey, dabble verse people. I came here for fun, but so far it has been nonstop incitement. I'm not a violent person, but it's getting close to outright harassment. The whole thing has been a debacle from the start. Yeah. But you know, what's interesting is he didn't seem to care as much when it was Kevin and Bob going at it. Right. He wasn't like, Hey guys, put your weapons down. Please. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he had a different perspective on things. But the, that, I'm just I'm just predicting the shows next week. John's shows next week. The the gloating that's oh, gonna yeah. happen from this weekend. Where the, were the you win, shit, where? <laughs> The winds. Or, or this fucking tweet about uh Spirit Airlines. <laughs> What's that? Uh thank you so much for letting me sit next to her spirit airlines. She's coming to have dinner with me tomorrow. She's not a catfish, she's a rock lobster. Oh was, yeah, what was that? It was well, did you he, oh, it sorry. was a uh uh he took a picture, like a stock photo, and put it up like he was sitting next to this person. I can't tell if he is doing that on purpose or he thinks he's slipping one by everybody. I guess the stock photo's us. already been produced on Dabblers Anonymous. Someone's oh, already yeah, on the original. But if you look how he <laughs> tweeted it. The line at the bottom, <laughs> it's right there. Like it, it's clearly not real. Well, you got us, John. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's 
he's been saving that one. He's next time oh, on yeah. a flight. But yeah, <laughs> someone's already produced the original uh, stock image from on Dabbler. So. Check out the cans on this broad. <laughs> so All right, Cardiff, you're going to be on. Uh, you're you're the Super Bowl halftime show today. Am I correct I, in that? I, yes, the Super Bowl halftime show. W A T B. Whom are these broadcasts? <laughs> yes, I that's believe right. is the show. <laughs> yes, that's what it's called. Yeah. So unfortunately, who are these socials? Didn't get the didn't didn't get tapped by the NFL to be the official alternate halftime show. But maybe no, next it's, year. Maybe it's next caused year a lot of back. strife at the network, but that's fine. Yeah, this is going to be year. your your rock mankind empty arena. That's what's yes. going to be. <laughs> yes. But definitely check out uh, uh, patreon.com slash card of electric. And uh, who is Frank D'Angelo tonight? A special presentation, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll be premiering. I, yeah, I want to check that out, actually. That sounds like a cool, uh, yeah. a good idea for a show. So I, I will definitely watch that. And you guys should, too. Go support our boy Cardiff. Yeah. Yeah, do that. All right. Thanks, Thanks for the <laughs> Oh, and... Uh, yeah. March the 9th, subreddit surfing live, carlsoncomedy.com. Get your tickets now. Oh, uh, yeah, I wanted to mention Vinny. this. This is this is funny. So Vin, Vinny uh, Paulino texted me the other day and goes, hey, would you want to be on subreddit surfing? Uh, there, We have a few subreddits I think you'd find interesting. And I said, yeah, when? Because I he texted me at like 8 at night or something. I thought he meant like right now, and I couldn't do it at that moment. So I go, when? And he goes, sometime in the next few months <laughs> okay i'll keep my schedule clear vinny thank you <laughs> well what are you doing what are you doing tomorrow night at 8 p.m uh tomorrow i should be good tomorrow oh you want to come on sure all right i'll send you a link there it is <laughs> vinny's on vacation vinny's uh busy getting was, fatter on a beach somewhere so it was much easier sounding <laughs> okay. than it was with i'm vinny. on the creep off and subreddit surfing tomorrow <laughs> what a day oh you're on the creep off too yeah Everyone I reached out to was busy with the creep off tomorrow. So, oh, really? Yes. Oh Actually, well, then then I'm busy in that case. Oh. <laughs> no, I'll do I'll do it. All right, I'll send you a link. All right, thanks, Cardiff. Galaga. <sighs> All right, I said Galaga. So, Galaga. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> uh, Joseph Collins, two bucks. Uh, Cardiff and Tukey equals party time. Absolutely, yeah. I like I liked having those guys on. They're fun. That was great. Uh, say no more. Uh, five somethings. Uh, Cardiff doing Frank D'Angelo karaoke would bring peace to these uh, battling seniors. That would be fantastic. <laughs> oh, so um, should we finish this uh, Kevin Brennan, Kevin Brennan, Bob Levy video now? Yeah, definitely. Like the mayhem has ceased. Yep. We'll get back to you, uh, super chatters, momentarily. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go right to the beginning of the kerfuffle. Okay. <laughs> They started fighting, and then Tukey talked for like thirty minutes straight. <laughs> I'd rather have Tukey than fucking this horse shit. Honestly, look, oh, look, look at these sure. two decrepit old men, and I like Bob, but I'm just saying two ancient men going at each other, thinking they're tough. Like the idea that Kevin thinks he's a tough guy. I, I, what, do you, what do you think uh, Gary Goldman and Jimmy Martinez think about that? <laughs> <laughs> here it is. Here. Wow, wow. You're you're looking for me? Come here! Come here! Why? Kevin keeps saying you fucking bitch. Why is Bob the bitch in this situation? I don't know, because Kevin's hiding behind three people. Yeah, because because Kevin's buddies are like you're not gonna fight him. <laughs> like why? how Bob obviously wants to fight him, right? Oh yeah, he's trying to get at him, but you know Kevin's got the high ground, and we know how that ends. So why is Bob the bitch? I don't understand that. Kevin seems like uh, guys. Why are any of you fighting? Could I impart some wisdom here? <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe it maybe it takes a physical disadvantage to see all of this clearly. <laughs> None of you should be fighting each other. You are not men who are in peak physical condition. You are not men that are in the prime of your lives. You are old men who tell jokes for a living. Stop yeah. thinking that you're physically imposing creatures that are meant to brawl, whether it's in the ring or out of it. Yeah, what do you what do you guys think in the chat? Who's the bitch here? Um I think it's clearly Kevin. Yeah. I mean Bob Bob probably overreact. Like there's no reason for Bob to be like, "Come here, you fucking piece of shit." But like, 
Kevin's antagonizing. Kevin knew that Bob would have that reaction, and Kevin did nothing about it. So what it looked like at first, though, is Kevin went up and was videotaping him, and Bob at first was like, what? Almost like he wasn't going to throw, but then he, he could see that he was filming him to purposely rile him up. And then yeah. he kind of went along with it, threw a glass at him. You know? Yeah, Bob gave him what he wanted, unfortunately. I wish Bob was just like, whatever, because then Kevin would look like even more of a bitch. But This is a landslide, um, Kevin's the bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's clear. Yeah. Come on, bitch. I gotta say, just on the audio that I'm hearing, if one of these two men is ready for a fight, it's, it's Bob. Not Kevin Brennan. No. I don't get what makes Bob the bitch here. You could say he's crazy. You could say he's out of his mind. But I don't think of the two, he's the bitch, quote unquote. No. Nope. What if, yeah, he's an absolute bitch. You guys got to throw him out after you approached him and riled him up. Throw him out. Secu oh. Security, you got to get fucking rid of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> How great would it be? Because a lot of people have been saying that Kevin is becoming John. I think we were kind of the first on that train, but it's it's clear now. How great would it be if Kevin went up to security and was like, you don't understand. Brock Lee was super chatting John. It's supposed to be my weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But he does shows with the shit wear. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what he has to say about this video because he must be getting absolutely horrible feedback from it. Secu security! Hack Rider was helping him with the Levy verse. What do you understand about that? Did he did he tweet this out himself? I forget. Yes, Kevin? He did. Yeah, he did. He must have, right? It's his video. Which is insane. I just want to see what the people underneath are saying. Does he have like his uh Yeah? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you are so awesome. Does it really say that? Yeah, that's a uh, uh, well. That could be that's Kate Meany. No, uh, okay. So who knows? Yeah, so scary. Why is yeah. Kate Meany? Is she a comedian? Why is she involved in any of this? I have no idea. Yeah, Bob's the bitch. What a pathetic old loser. Really? It's kind of it's more split in the in the comments. Now, if you want to say it's pathetic for like a you know sixty five year old man to be like, come here, you motherfucker, <laughs> like that's fine. Clearly, Kevin wanted that reaction out of him. I, I don't get what makes Bob a bitch there. If you're if bitch is backing away from a fight, I would think Kevin would be the bitch here, not Bob. Bob, you could say, is a maniac and didn't behave like an adult, but I don't see him as the bitch in this situation. Yeah, well, you go at someone, and then they come after you, and then you sick three security guards or whoever the fuck was with you to protect you. You're a bitch. Yeah, right. Totally. When you, you, I mean, you heard Tuki saying, like, he doesn't want to deal with Melton. He doesn't want to deal with any of these people. I guess he was nice to John. Bob? By the way, John's odor, I've heard a lot about. That, I've heard I mean, that a lot. I from, meant to ask Tukey yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. heard that. But is that is that all that we have from Atlantic City right now? Yes, it is. Almost two hours. <laughs> you want, so, you want to do, do the rest tomorrow? Yeah. Does that work? That works. Just. Put this episode and, out tomorrow and then put the other episode out I don't know, Friday or something. Or maybe that could even be a YouTube exclusive or something. YouTube exclusive, Patreon exclusive, like the old days. Oh, maybe. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah. How about this? We go live for members tomorrow. Okay. Because we, we got to get to this Coach HP thing. It's my favorite interview ever. It's... The most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. In my Can I life. give you a little tease? Yeah. For the people. Oh, I was like, yeah, I saw it. Would, would Coach HP interviewing Joe Rogan be something of interest? Absolutely. Of course. Would Coach HP interviewing like Jamie, uh, Rogan's producer, be something of note? I would love to see that. Okay, that could be interesting. Mm -hmm. Would Coach HP interviewing an employee of the mothership Say a security guard or a bartender. Would that be something of note? I would like to actually hear what the day in day out there is like. Okay, good. How about, I don't know, eight rungs lower than that? Like, I don't know, like a carpenter? 
Just a guy that met Joe Rogan once. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's all he talks about. It's the greatest interview subject ever conducted. Oh, it's great. So I can't wait for that. We'll get to it tomorrow. We got some Shane Gillis to talk about. We got some Joe Matteris, uh, Mark Marin versus Bert Kreischer. Maybe we'll get to that uh, Portnoy KFC stuff uh, that I wanted to talk about a little bit. So we have a lot to get to tomorrow. And today we'll just we'll change the title to, uh, to I don't know something. I'll change it after. But hopefully, Hack Riot already did. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, speaking of Hack Ride, go check. Out- oh, well, you know what? This gives us a little time for this. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing you big time Hack Ride. What are you talking about? I heard that Hack Ride invited you on the other night. You said, I'll check my schedule. Oh. Never got back to him and then showed up in the chat almost to taunt him. So here's here's what happened, if you want to know what actually happened. It's uh, DJ Electra actually centric. Yes. So she does a show at 8 o'clock our time. Well, I think eight. she does a great job. I agree. I just want that I said. I agree. So... Uh, Hack Ride messages me after you guys finish last week and goes, he doesn't ask me to do her show. He tells me I'm doing her show. Good. That a boy. He goes, you're, and I go, okay. <laughs> and I go, at this current time, I don't have an objection. And then throughout the week, I said, yes, I can do it. <laughs> yes, I can do it. Yes, I can do it. And then uh, Thursday morning, I go, we still going tonight? And uh, I basically got bumped for no reason. <laughs> This is the exact opposite story that I got. That's fine. I have receipts. <laughs> I had a feeling I was told <laughs> that you basically taunted him. Like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I can do it. Maybe I can't. And then showed up in his chat to sort of toy with his head. It was like three hours later. So I was supposed to do it at 11 or at 8. This was at about 11 or something. And I just said, hi, I guess, like being passive aggressive because I got bumped as a joke. Oh, wow. but I was laying in bed and he sends me the link and I'm like, I'm not going on right now. Well, guys, I think that sounds like Hack Ride is doing Craig dirty. So if you want to support Craig, no, no, consider no, yourself no, a convicted ride. Craigophile. Support Hack Ride. <laughs> Put the picture up for the folks, Craig, one last time. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, the, the viewers have just tripled since the last time this was on. So. Oh, well, guys, glad you're here. For all of you out there that don't like Hack Ride, we've seen your comments. His voice is annoying. He's too much. Whatever. Consider yourself a convicted Craigophile. <laughs> and if we sell enough of these shirts. No. I don't think again, so. there's a number in my mind. I won't reveal what it is until we hit the goal. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I, I do think these should be hung up around your neighborhood, if nothing else. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think. Convicted think... Craigophile. What's wrong with that? I think uh, uh, what's the worst that could happen? Someone just sees my face in the word file and doesn't read the rest of what? it. You could be a cinephile. There are plenty of lovely. Sure. Terms. Sure. I'm sure you're saying you prefer the term you guys like is minor attracted person. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. But that's not as catchy. I get what you're saying, but that's not as catchy for a T-shirt. That's not what I was saying at all. Actually, I hear you loud and clear, but. <laughs> I'll get that off the screen. Hey, hey, this this show, we could call this show, we could change the name of this show to Map. Mike and Pedophile. Nope. 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 <laughs> and then so. it's everything you ever wanted, really. Nah. You get bumped up to co-host in that title. We got, we got so <laughs> many super chats to get to. Oh, all right. Well, let's run through them. Um, uh... Uh, Mojo Buffalo, two bucks. Has broccoli been identified? Hit the like button. Not yet. Uh, Dang Lizard, five euros. Uh, KB proudly proclaims he took money from Bob. KB fans think Bob doesn't deserve money for MLC episodes he did, and it's fine he took money to pay Stuttering John. Well, does deserve money is a weird kind of, like. I don't I don't think you have to but Kevin's like voluntarily paying Ray DeVito and these people and he told Bob that he was making X amount so it's fucked up to just not pay him be like haha I got you I guess that makes you you know what I guess that makes you not a bitch <laughs> is right. just laughing as you don't pay your debts but backing away from a fight 
Bob's the bit like I don't under, I don't understand any of it. Mm. Um uh Nat Clo. Uh it doesn't look like anybody no showed great content so far this uh Atlantic City weekend. It's definitely interesting content. Yeah. I don't think anyone comes out of it looking great. Melton looks fine, whatever. Tu- you know what? Tuki comes out of it looking great. Uh Will Heron, two bucks. Uh Essi Mi Miguel No Ojos. It's in Spanish. Damn straight. Yep. Uh, Joe Collins, two bucks. A security guard subscribed to Melton's channel. That's what Melton said. I don't know if I bought that story, but maybe that's why they got fired. Maybe. So Melton told the story of like they're describing why John is so angry and everything. Mm-hmm. You know what? Now that I'm saying it, I kind of do believe it because I'd be interested. <laughs> right. So they're describing to the security guard what happened. And they're like, oh, John does this show and he rants about people that troll him. And the guy goes, what's your show? And Patrick says, nobody likes onions. And he goes, I'll subscribe. I'll check it out tomorrow. Or she, maybe. I don't know which one it was. But That'd be great if it was a woman. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm a fan. Now she's in John's chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you. <laughs> uh, Dawn for two bucks. John left halfway through Gino's set. Boy, what, what, the, the, the amount of N-words he must have missed. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, Janet the Evil Lawyer, two bucks. John counts beers like people count dog ears. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, Janet again. Vince doesn't have his teenage boy filter on, so you can actually see what shit he actually looks like. Yeah, it's too bad. Uh, Turbo, seventy forty nine, five bucks. Your words just hurt Tukey. He loves you more than a friend. I don't even remember that. What did we say about Tukey? I love Tukey. Um, I don't know. Joe Collins, two bucks. Bob confronted Kevin and Kevin ran. Uh, I think Kevin confronted Bob and then Kevin. Kevin kind of confronted. Yeah, but but Kevin did like run away like a little girl, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like I don't get I don't get where Kevin comes out the winner in that exchange. I don't either. I get again. I guess Bob reacting violently and getting thrown out and probably maybe he's banned from uh, MGM's for life, which sucks. That's not a great look for a professional comedian. But why would Kevin give a fuck about that? Like, if Kevin's wondering about who looks like more of a bitch, it's Kevin. It's always Kevin. Like, Kevin Kevin is a whiny bitch. Like, does he not realize that? I the word know. bitch is so perfectly attributed to Kevin. All he does is constantly whine and bitch about what other people are doing, how much money other people are making, what someone is paying this person versus paying Kevin. Like, these are bitchy things. If you went, if you Google bitch, the first couple examples it gives you are things Kevin does. Right. Constantly worrying about other people's money is a bitchy move. Right. Uh, James Boyd, five bucks. KB was yelling, "You don't want anything of this at Melton and Tukey." Oh yeah, you don't want you don't want none of this, or you don't want any of this. And finally, Nick West, two bucks. That picture is far too skinny for Craig. Um, shut up. Well, Craig asked Hackride if he could make it look more appealing <laughs> to like you know kids that see it. No, uh, it's just fresh off a haircut, so my beard. He said like if people, down. yeah, like if 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 dads want to get this for their kids or something. Yeah, no, it was fresh. It was fresh off a haircut. And then Craig said, "Hi, Devin. Hi, Alexandra." <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, one other piece of business, kind of related to John in a way, mm-hmm. that Hackride wanted me to bring up. Uh, right, I wanted Hackred mentioned to me, and I wanted to bring up on the show. So, do we have a? Ch- I, I thought Hackride and Electra were like moderated our chat. Do they not? Uh, Hackride was in here. Oh no, he's back now. Actually, uh, so I do thought. We need, do we need a moderator? <sighs> um, sh- sure. I don't know. I don't think so. Like, what? What's the benefit of one? Potential. Uh content for like five seconds if they <laughs> fuck up and block somebody i don't know so hack ride mentioned to me that andrea brown mm-hmm. uh former stuttering john chat moderator might be interested he says she's really good which i don't know what that entails for a moderator really is andrea in this chat right now that'll be a good test she here now yeah right well here's the thing is like i think she does she used to do like richard ojetta's and i think she does like hal spark like political shows and oh, she's she's, she seems like a a bit of a dimwit. Perfect. <laughs> In the times I've seen her. 
So like, but like, here's the thing is I could say that about Electra Fry and she'll laugh for the most part. Not if I talk about Hack Ride, but if I talk about her, if I talk about her, she'll laugh. <laughs> yeah, if you talk about Hack Ride, she's going to get defensive. So the claws will come in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't talk about my man like that. You know, like, like is Andrea, do I want to associate with Andrea Brower? I don't know. It doesn't, it didn't feel like it fit this show. But if people, if there's benefits to a chat moderator, then sure, why not? But I don't know. Andrea Brower doesn't seem like, uh, the uh, the vibe we're going for here really <laughs> uh turbo 7049 two bucks uh this is in response to what you said to tukey uh you said you didn't care about people in the dabble verse oh sure tukey i love more than a friend that's a good point that's a good point uh, and yeah i'll be honest i was being kind of a tough guy myself i like <laughs> i was you know was strong and it was for, it was for the bit i overreacted guys i'm sorry uh, James Boyd, two bucks. KB was yelling. That's uh, yelling that while surrounded by security. Yes. Oh sure. That's. I mean, it's a. Hey, it's a good move. As a guy who I myself am not a particularly tough man, that's a great move when you're being held back by people to be like, "Don't you dare, Bob!" <laughs> It'd be a bad move for you to come at me. Um, uh, hack ride two bucks. Andrea mod question mark. Uh, and then. I don't know why he's paying. I just put his chats up if they're relevant anyway. <laughs> uh, Hack Ride, yes. Why are you asking, Craig? I told you the benefit. She's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like... <laughs> yeah, but she's awesome doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> you, you see, you... I guess. I guess what I'm asking is like because she comes from that world, like John and Hal Sparks, and she, like, and I guess you know maybe she'll look at it as we're doing a service for society. But when people are in the chat calling Craig a pedophile, will she understand that? you know right like if i'm not gonna ban anybody mm. unless i start noticing like either of our addresses being how are people gonna country. notice that they're convicted craigophiles that's like right. will andrea understand what that means you know yeah, i don't think so i guess that's my question is uh, andrea doesn't like know this show at all so does that make sense to have someone as a moderator but i figured we could uh air that out on air i think that's the best way to do it generally you know yeah and then we'll get feedback if, if uh people are interested well mike just cost me a mod thanks that was from hack ride why what does that mean i don't know well so if i said something there that i don't even remember that's going to offend her then that's a reason she shouldn't be doing it. yes because i i don't even know what he's referring to but if i already said something that's going to bother her then she's definitely out no chance that doesn't make any sense to have that i just sent hack ride the link if you want us to send her for a second oh but the but the other reason i wanted to mention it on the show is like i'd almost rather someone that's a fan of the show if someone that knows the show is interested in doing it maybe yeah, that makes more sense it's like uh principled uncertainty or something someone that's always here well he's got a lot on his plate but yes someone like that yeah someone like that is an example yeah but i don't know did hack ride say you wanted to come in or are we just waiting for nothing I just sent it so you can do the thing, you end the show, you end the show. All right. Um, blindmike.net is where you go for uh, all the links that we've been talking about today. If you want to watch this show, well, I don't know where tomorrow's episode is going to be. So the best way to find out is to subscribe to everything and turn your notifications on, whether it's uh, wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Google Play, right here on YouTube. Tap that notification bell, like this video, comment, share subscribe all that stuff um but yeah turn your notifications on on all platforms including uh patreon and youtube members and you'll know when we do tomorrow's episode um or just support the show for free we appreciate that as well and uh craig has relaunched after a hiatus his gay porn podcast oh it's like what the fuck are you talking about is that what it is Nope, the murder mystery show. Uh, it's not really about a mystery. porn actors. Nope, just people dying. It's called Rubbed Out. I swear, Hackrad keeps saying it's gay. There's something gay related. Am uh, I wrong? It's a, it's a double entendre, and the title it means uh, jerking off and killing somebody. So uh, oh. that's what he's referring. So it's to. about gay men that murder people while jerking off. Yeah. Well, it's a fun concept. Yeah, it's rare. So you find you find a case. <laughs> It's worth talking about. <laughs> Do an episode every six months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right, it's yeah, called go, Rubbed Out. Rubbed Out, very good show. Dot org. If you like the format of Why You Laughing without all the research and prep work, eh, moderate research and prep. <laughs> no, go.
go check out Craig. Support the boys over there. I haven't seen the very good show boys in a while. Yeah, they're uh, everyone's running around with their heads cut off right now. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, the only thing that's like uh, uh, keeping us together is rubbed out. You know what I mean? I say that every morning to Alba when I wake up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. uh, let's get the hell out of here, I guess, huh? Oh, and support Hack. Go subscribe. Hack Ride Puzzle Box is back for you, those of you guys that don't know. Electro Fried is a show. So go subscribe to Hack Ride's YouTube channel. Uh, and all of that as well. Support the support the the network, the people, the Blind Mike Project universe. That's what I'm talking about. Bye bye. And we have a mean transition. Sappers, clear the way.